Rancho San Rafael Regional Park, a wonderful place for a little history, enjoyment, and relaxation. Prior to European settlement, Rancho San Rafael, like much of the Truckee Meadows, would have been covered in a mix of tall grasses, willows, and cottonwoods, connected by creeks and wetlands flowing through the sagebrush. The Washoe and Paiute tribes would have hunted and fished the area and enjoyed all of the bounty it had to offer. Around 1896, the Pincolini brothers purchased 160 acres of what is now considered Rancho San Rafael for $2,750. In 1919, the Jensens acquired the property and began to develop the ranch into a larger sheep operation. Under Russell Jensen, the ranch was expanded to 312 acres. They were the first to develop the land and constructed a dwelling on the property in the early 1920s. Russell Jensen married Holda Dierichs and had two daughters, Jacqueline and Joan. On August 3, 1925, Russell was tragically killed in a horrible car accident at the age of 37, leaving Hulda a widow. Hulda would remarry, but passed away in 1935. The ranch was then sold to Dr. Raphael Herman, his brother Norman, and Norman's wife, Mariana. Over the duration of their ownership of Rancho San Rafael, the Hermans not only built the lovely ranch house, but also enlarged the ranch by purchasing approximately 160 acres of adjoining properties. Rancho San Rafael was now 415 acres, making Herman's Rancho San Rafael one of the largest single owner properties in the Truckee Meadows. In 1969, UNR Land Foundation brought in William Thornton to obtain and send Mariana Herman two appraisals for the property. No agreement could be made with Mrs. Herman. Her wish was not to have the property divided. These circumstances hampered any attempts to buy Rancho San Rafael for another decade. Many, many years ago, well, long before the 1982 when the park was dedicated, I got a phone call one day from Clark Santini. And Clark had been a student at university and uh, my husband knew him, he was director of the student union. And so he wanted to know if Bob and I would come meet him after work across the street from campus that he had an idea he wanted to run past us. So I said, well, okay, I'll check with Bob. And he said, okay, let's do it. So we went, he had spoken with the Washoe County and he thought it would be a good idea to try to find a way to turn Rancho San Rafael into a regional park. Maybe what we need to do is get the word out in the community, get more people involved and maybe start a petition drive to get people, show people had an interest in that. So we started a petition drive. We got quite a few people in the community, everybody was supposed to find friends and family that would go out with petitions and secure names. So we did, and we did get a lot. And uh, so we got talking about you know, how to go about doing this, getting the three agencies involved, Washoe County, City of Reno, and City of Sparks, and have a joint bond issue. So it was a regional park. So the big thing then was having to go <clears throat> before those bodies and talk to them and see if they, could, they had any interest in it. Well, fortunately, Gene Sullivan was Parks Director for Washoe County at the time, and Gene really was supportive of this. As we, he really, really wanted to see it become a park. And so he worked very hard within, within the government here to, to do that. So we kept pushing it and pushing it. Well, a joint bond issue, if we were gonna do that, try to do it, was gonna require that it be approved by the legislature. So we had to go before the legislature and make the proposal. The city of Sparks, were, they were all opposed, so we couldn't get the legislature to approve it. So it kept coming about, how are we gonna go about doing this? Because property had to be purchased. And Mrs. Herman had not been really very supportive of the idea of selling it to any price anybody offered. It kept going up and up. But a lot of other groups were looking at this property for various reasons. Well. After some long period of time, we probably worked and worked on this for about five years um, to try to get some, something that would work to try to get the property. And so finally, we had a legislator who happened to be on a flight uh, with the, the director of the Public Employees Retirement System. And he suggested that maybe the employees retirement system could purchase the land and if we get a bond issue passed, then we would pay them back. 
And so it got to be a discussion, and they finally decided they would do that if we get the bond issue going. Well, the county commission approved the idea to do a bond issue. And so they purchased the property. Mrs. Herman worked with them and got it done. And so uh, 1979, we had a bond issue that passed two to one. At the time, this whole park idea started developing in the late 70s. I was chairman of the Democratic Party in this county. And I knew from that in involvement what was happening. I was also involved some with the legislature. And at that time, uh, Frank Farenkopf, who was head of the Republican Party in this state, uh, I, and I were doing a debate every Sunday night uh, before 60 Minutes. Somebody, I think it was Clark Santini, came up with the idea of us doing an advertisement for uh, the bond issue, which was, they had finally figured out how to get it on the ballot and it was going to uh, be voted on. Frank and I were very happy to do that and we had our picture taken underneath the arch out there and did other campaigning, speaking up at various times to get the bond issue passed. And my role in getting it passed was a very meager one, but I was very happy to uh, speak out publicly as head of the Democratic Party at the time. But it's worth noting that it was certainly a nonpartisan issue. At that time, my wife Cynthia was also on the Park Commission in this county, and so she was involved at the beginning as well. And oddly enough, uh, I'm very happy to say that we live one block west of Rancho San Rafael, so we get to enjoy it on a daily basis now, and it's wonderful. Clark and Jenny convinced me that this would be a good thing. Jenny Kersey, she's, uh, she's the organizer. She's the one that keeps things moving in a straight going forward. Clark was the mouth. Clark was the guy that went out and really started talking it up. Uh, Clark wasn't happy unless he had a cause, and he recruited people into that cause, and I was one of those. So, uh, so that was uh, that was how I got involved, and I'm, I'm real glad I did. It was one of those issues where people came together on on uh, the concept. There was a lot of ideas; not, some of them weren't very good <laughs> about what should be here. It was a constant battle. Uh, but now it's, it's pretty well settled into what it is, which is just a great resource for the community. It was one of the fairly early uh, uh, people involved in the development of Rancho San Rafael. And uh, uh, Jenny Kersey, I think, recruited me and uh, brought me on board. And uh, uh, we did a lot of activities initially when we were thinking about it, including a trip down to Sacramento. and took a look at a, a similar kind of park down there, regional park down there. And it was oriented on agriculture and farming and things like that. They had uh, um, farm equipment, old farm equipment and whatnot. So we brought that up idea here. And it gives people a, a sense of uh, what agriculture was when you had to use horses and things like that. We did a lot of things that were preliminary to getting going with the, with the park activity. And one of the first things that we had to do was to find an architect to come in and help us develop a plan. Decided to have John Hancock from Carson City, and he came in as the landscape architect. Early on went through a process that involved getting public input on what the park should be and what it would look like. So we formed committees. I was the public input committee chairman. We had an input meeting uh, where we invited the public to come. And I knew that we would be having people who wanted to have a golf course here. And I knew we had people who wanted to have an emphasis on horse activities. I didn't want to have an argument between the horse people and the golf people and the, the, the agriculture people. So as the people came in, we gave them a number from one to eight, I think it was. And then we broke them into groups by number. And then we had them go out to the different formats, the different maps that John had put together. 
in order to uh, have them comment on them and write down and come to consensus ideas on what they liked about this, what they didn't like about it. It was uh, an important part in the development of Rancho. In my early career, I was Park Planner 3 for Washoe County. They assigned me to all the parks within Washoe County to do design, um, to get water rights, to work with the community on what they wanted in their parks, um, and go to commission meetings and all of that. So that was my early career. I was and feel very happy to be um, part of what happened here at Rancho San Rafael. This was the master plan that was ultimately done for the site uh, by Design Concepts. And so I was, as a, as a staff person, I was instrumental in helping work with the citizens on what this park should be. This plan was done by the consultants on behalf of the community. As soon as the ball start, started to roll, started to go, and they, they had a vision, we worked with citizens, it was like, oh yeah, okay, I get it. You know, and now, you know, there's, there's no question why we, why the community needs a facility like this. The opening, obviously, for this site was a huge deal. It, it was very, very important to the community to have a big splash because a lot of effort had been made to acquire the property and get the master plan. This is the schedule of events that we had inserted in the then um, Reno Gazette Journal. Back then, it was a really big deal to get this in the paper and to get it done free because they, they, weren't, they didn't do that kind of stuff free. The other big thing was the, the schedule events for the day. Um, I, kinda, I laid that out and the highlight of that is we had Tina and Bertha, the, the two elephants that were from the Nugget. And, and so they parade on opening day after, with all the other events that were going on. They paraded down the main road <clears throat> led by the trainers and that was um, also a big deal. And we had all kinds of other activities for children. We had a dunk tank uh, to dunk tank the politicians, which was very funny uh, and interesting. Uh, we had bands and, I mean, you name it. So that was, um, that, was a, that was a real highlight. And then the other highlight was the initiation of the Balloon Festival, which started right about the time, I mean, it was being thought of, but right about the time I was going to leave. They did start at one time at Stead out there and have their first year in 1981. 1982, they brought it to the park here and uh, to bring it closer into town. And so every year from thereafter, we had the balloon races in September and they keep getting larger, larger every year. And I got involved with them in the later 80s by coming up and just doing security at the VIP tent. And the next thing I knew I was in charge of it. <laughs> but it's been a lot of work and I've been doing that ever since. I did my early professional work, University of Utah, Salt Lake City. And my degrees are from there. And Utah had just gone through the throes of having the campus of the University of Utah dedicated as the State Arboretum. And so I arrived here in the Department of Biology and noticed that no arboretum in the state and no arboretum on campus. And I went to the, the president the year immediately within the first month I was here and took my department chairman and we suggested that uh, we have a campus arboretum. So I was the, the contact between the May Foundation and uh, Gene Sullivan, who was Parks Director, of course, at that time. The May Foundation realized that we had to have land somewhere, first of all, to build a museum to house Wilbur's collections and for the Great Basin Adventure. Wilbur loved small animals and children and wanted to put those together in a demonstration farm, and that became, of course, the Great Basin Adventure. And I suggested to the May Foundation, isn't this maybe a chance uh, for us to get an arboretum started? They said, well, go for it, uh, and I did. And so the next day I called Gene, and we had a meeting right away, and of course the answer was yes. 
the construction of the Arboretum and the museum was just a natural evolution. We listened to the people in the, the neighborhood. As far as my career goes, um, after three years of working as a park planner, it became apparent that one of the things I was doing quite a bit was working on the uh, Arboretum. And also, uh, the Great Basin Adventure, which was an animal feature, needed a manager. So they created a position of a, a person that would run the museum, the Arboretum, and the Great Basin Adventure. So I became that person, and I, I ran the, all three places for about 15 years. Wilbur really agreed that teaching people about different areas and different cultures really enriched their lives. So I would say that we try to continue to do that here at the museum. Over the years, stewardship of Rancho San Rafael has passed through many hands, including planners, park rangers, park maintainers, and our many public partners, each with their own stories to tell and experiences to share. I started here at Rancho San Rafael as a ranger. Um, then I um, uh, went uh, inside, as they say, to become a park planner, and then I was the head of the park planning department, eventually the assistant director and the director of the entire parks department. So a little bit of everything in there over the years. There is a whole lot to the job um, than just um, being outdoors, which is the part we all enjoy. It's the part that we all have passion about, but um, there's this other piece that comes with it that, that's a lot for these staff members to handle. And I was always proud of them. They were, they were just really great and they work really hard. So from maintenance on up, it's just amazing what they do. My name is Bob Reinheimer. I've worked at Rancho San Rafael since 1982 until I retired about 22 years at Rancho San Rafael. My name's Andy Mink and I worked for Washoe County for 27 and a half years, uh, mostly at Rancho San Rafael. I started here in 1989 as a uh, park ranger one at the time, and then park ranger, then district manager through the years. Andy's been terrific. He's, uh, he's an Eagle Scout. <laughs> And he's been that way all his career. Andy was instrumental in opening the dog field. It was his idea. He talked me into it and I okayed it. He really, the things he's done above and beyond. It was a, a lot of work and a lot of effort, um, but it was really worth it. Um, people were so enthusiastic about it and I just, looking at my children, I kept thinking, that's something we really need in this community, is a, a nice open space like this, where we can have places where you can just walk and hike and have a nice time. And I, I brought them out here after we were able to come to the property a few times, and oh, they were just so excited about this place. It was pretty special to them then. Now, of course, they're all grown and have their own kids, so. We have, I have grandkids now that come here and just love going to the museum and uh, just running around and playing in the playgrounds. They just, it's just wonderful. So I just always want to thank the people that voted yes to purchase this property. It was just, it was just so wonderful to think that people really appreciated that, having this in their lives as well.